And I'm going to extend this now to, to the biology. And I want to uh, uh, show you the uh, website for free articles and references uh, about what I'm talking about. So you can go there. And I have uh, two announcements before I talk. Okay. Number one, the science I'm going to present can change your life very profoundly. When I first started lecturing, I told people, this science, with this science, you can create the most wonderful life on this planet. And then the people in the audience would look at me and go, your life does not look that good. And I said something like, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> But the secret I found out is two. First part is to know, to have the, the knowledge. But the second part is the most important, and that part is you must actually use the science in your life or it doesn't work. And the truth as I see it from my own life is that if there is a heaven, I think it's here right now. And that's from using my own knowledge in my life. And that's the big point. Okay, and number two is the medical profession does miracles. However, there are great problems in the medical profession. Medicine uh, does miracles with trauma, like if you break something or you got to cut something out or put something back in, they do miracles. However, if there are illnesses like cancer, Alzheimer's, uh, diabetes, things, these kinds of illnesses, medicine does not do a very good job. And the reason it is not, it is not the practitioner, it is the education that we provide to the medical doctor. I was a professor in medicine, I taught medicine for 20 years. And we do not provide a proper and complete education. And the main reason, the pharmaceutical industry does not want us to teach how you can heal yourself. So if I say something bad about medicine, it's not the medical doctor. Okay. I am a uh, cellular biologist. And uh, I want to tell you about a misperception you may have. When you look in a mirror and see yourself and you see like one person looking back, it's, that is not true. You are made out of 50 trillion cells. And the cells are the living entities. So you are a community, not a single person. But your mind is the government for the 50 trillion cells. And if you have a good government, you have health. If you have like the United States government, then you are sick. <laughs> so it, the part that is the powerful part is in the mind. The cells, I will, t I will talk about cells for this reason. Because every function that you see in the human body it's already present in every cell. Every cell has a respiratory, a digestive, an excretory system, Steam. a nervous system, and even an immune system in every single cell. So it's easier to understand how one cell works than to try to understand how 50 trillion cells work. There are two, in, in philosophy, there are two beliefs about how life works and their very different opposing beliefs. These beliefs come from the time of the ancient Greeks before Christ. And the first belief is from a man called Democritus. He is the man that gave us the word Adam. And this is what he said about how life works. That what you see physically is all there is. There's nothing in the empty space. If you want to understand life, then you have to understand atoms. And that means uncuttable. The smallest thing is an atom. And there's atoms, and then there's empty space. So atoms are in space. And then motion is when atoms hit each other and bounce like a billiard ball. 
So life is atoms colliding with each other. A completely different point of view is provided by Socrates. He has a dualistic vision. Uh, I, one is there's an invisible energy which he calls a form or a soul that gives shape to matter. That this energy was here before life and will be here forever. The energy is separate from matter. That the energy is perfect and ideal and it is unchanging. Then he talks about the material world, the physical world, and he says that the physical world is imperfect or a corrupt shadow of the ideal. So, for example, you can imagine the p concept of a perfect circle, but you can't, with a pencil, you can't make a perfect circle. Mm -hmm. So that the invisible world is perfect and the physical world is not. And this is the, fo this is the foundation of like the church that says that this world is not where we want to be, we want to be in the perfect world. So there are two beliefs of how cells are controlled. One is the control comes from the outside in, and the other is that the control is from the inside and goes out. The belief of the outside control is from Socrates that a form or a soul comes in and gives life. And the followers of, of uh, Socrates are spiritualists. In contrast, the followers of Democritus talk about atoms and mechanism. And in the, today's world, religion is the follower of Socrates, and science follows Democritus. Okay. The belief in Democritus is based on the work of Isaac Newton. Uh, Newton was studying what they believed the space and the stars were like a giant machine, a celestial mechanism. Then he created a mathematics called calculus and put in the data, uh, for example, of the moon going around the earth and he included mass, gravity, and acceleration. And with his equations, he could predict the accurate movement of the solar system. But he did not put God in the equation. He did not put spirit into the equation or a soul, no energy. So he predicted the universe based only on studying matter. And in conclusion, he said the universe is a machine. And if it is a machine, then the concept of Democritus uh, was right, and that Democritus was based on materialism. So science, including medicine, does not include invisible forces, energy, spirit in their understanding. And the concept of Rene Descartes, he talks about a body, and then he zocked, or said, um, cogito ergo sum, and he came up with the mind. But after Newton, then we separate the mind from the body, and this is a vital force. And in Newtonian physics, which is based on matter only, you eliminate the vital force in the mind. And then medicine only has the body left to study, the physical body. So, uh, in the universe, if, if the universe is a machine, then you can take it apart and study it, and then you will know how the universe works by looking at the pieces. So they look at the human body, and the human body is a machine. So in medicine, they take apart the body, look at the molecules, and then try to determine your health by just looking at the physical molecule. So the mission of modern science is to obtain knowledge that can be used to dominate and control nature, which is a machine. So the, uh, the important understanding is where is the control in, a, in the human machine? And from uh, Charles Darwin, he said that the control is passed from parent to child because the traits of the parents are expressed in the child. And since they were only looking for physical things, chemicals, they took apart the sperm and the eggs 
to find which chemicals control life. And 100 years after Charles Darwin, James Watson and Francis Crick tell us the story of DNA. The DNA is a double helix, and the, uh, the pattern for the human body's materials are in just one single helix. So each strand Jeder has strand. a pattern. The pattern is in what they call bases. And the, the bases, are, the letters of the bases are A, T, C, and G, the genetic Und code. And the sequence of the bases uh, determine the structure of protein. And the, there are over 150,000 different proteins to make a human body. The proteins provide for the physical structure, and the proteins also provide for your functions. Based on his belief, Francis Crick created what is called the central dogma. It is like the Ten Commandments of biology. It says that you are protein. You're the protein. But where do you come from? And the information flows in one direction, from DNA to RNA to protein, which is you. So your fate and your structure is programmed in the DNA. The, um, the concept of the central dogma is what I taught in the medical school. And I did not know the meaning of the word dogma.